Hello, in this tutorial we will set up Retrofit, a networking library and do some additional configurations. So let's get started with the tutorial. Let's go to build.gradle file. Here you can see I have already defined the libraries for Retrofit and Converter Factory. And also we need to define some compile options with source and target compatibility to Java version 8. And everything looks good. In process of setup retrofit, we will need two things. First one is API client which will provide us an instance of retrofit at a time of network call and second one is API service in which we will define all our APIs. So let's create a new network package in which we will define our API client and API service. Inside this network package, let's create a new Java class which will be the API client. Inside this API client, let's define an instance of Retrofit. Now let's make one method, public static, return type is Retrofit and name of this method is getClient. We will initialize Retrofit object only once, so first let's check if Retrofit equal equal null, then we will initialize it. Retrofit is equal to new retrofit dot builder. Here we are using Retrofit for sending remote messages using Firebase Cloud messaging. So our base URL is https colon slash slash fcm dot google apis dot com slash fcm slash. In case of Retrofit, the base URL always ends with forward slash. Now let's add a converter factory which is a scalars converter factory. Here we are using Scalar's converter factory and not the JSON converter factory because to send remote messages we need to pass JSON body in network request and we don't have to manage network response. And finally dot build to build the retrofit object. Let's return the retrofit object. And done, our API client is now ready. Inside this network package, let's add another class which is API service. Select interface from here. Now let's define API for sending remote messages in this API service class. Our API is using POST method. So at POST and our API endpoint is send. So basically the complete URL is base URL plus send. Now let's add a retrofit call and the response type is string and the name of method is send remote message. We need two items for sending remote messages. First one is header and second one is body. We are going to use header map for headers because there are multiple headers for this method. And the second argument is at the red body string remote body. Our API service interface is now ready.
to initiate video meeting or audio meeting, token of user is required. In case of token is null or empty, we will display a message like user is not available for meeting. And if token is available, we will initiate the meeting. For now, we are just displaying a toast message in this method. And here we will use OR instead of AND. Now everything looks good. Let's run our application. Here we need two emulators for testing. So let's run it on both emulators. When I click on this audio meeting icon, it displays a message audio meeting with XYZ user. And if I click on video meeting icon, it displays a message video meeting with XYZ user. And in this simulator, we will get the same messages. Now let's sign out from this device. In second device, let's restart the application to get updated data from the database. If I click on this audio meeting icon, it displays a message ABC user is not available for meeting. That is because when we sign it out from first device, the token of that user is also removed from database. So let's sign in and check it again. So here you can see as token of ABC user is available, we can initiate the audio meeting or video meeting. To get updated data from database, restarting application is not a proper way. So let's implement this swipe refresh layout. Open this build.gradle file. Here you can see I have added dependency for swipe refresh layout. Now let's open layout file of our main activity. Here we need to put our resector view inside the swipe refresh layout. Let's put swipe refresh layout above the recycler view. Cut this recycler view from here and paste it inside swipe refresh layout. 
Now we can set the height of recycler view to match parent and remove its constraints because we already given constraints to the swipe refresh layout. Our swipe refresh layout is now ready. Now remove this progress bar because swipe refresh layout has its own progress bar. So we are done with the layout file of our main activity. Let's open our main activity.java file. First of all, let's remove the progress bar from everywhere. Now define swipe refresh layout. Set swipe refresh listener on swipe refresh layout. And on refresh we will call our get users method. Inside this get users method, let's set swipe refresh layout dot set refreshing true. After we get response from the database, we will set it to false. So here inside on complete listener, let's set swipe refresh layout dot set refreshing false. Previously we had called get users method only once, and now we are using swipe refresh layout, so it can be called multiple times. That's why we need to clear user list before adding new data. Now let's run our application in both emulators and check it. Now you can refresh the user list using swipe refresh layout. And also you can see the progress bar which is included in swipe refresh layout. As XYZ user is currently signed in, we can start audio or video meeting with him. Let's sign out from the account of XYZ user and refresh the user list in first emulator. And when I click on this meeting icon, it displays a message XYZ user is not available for meeting. Let's sign in again and check it. Now let's refresh the user list and done we can start meeting with XYZ user. So this is for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next tutorial.